Hey friends, this is Eric White with OpenXMLDeveloper.org. Today I am going to give you the short and sweet screencast on installing and using the OpenXML SDK version 2.6. The big feature in version 2.6 is that the OpenXML SDK now makes use of the new system.io.packaging library that I recently completed. For more information on that library and why we created a new implementation of system.io.packaging, please go to this blog post. Of course, the first thing you need to do is install Git. I particularly like Git extensions, which you can get at sourceforge.net slash project slash Git extensions. The nice thing about this download is that it also will install install a good version of the core Git tools, kdiff, and so on. So this is a convenient way to get the Git tools that you need. Next thing that you will need is some version of Visual Studio 2012 or later. The Visual Studio 2013 Community Edition will work just fine. Next, you'll need to clone the OpenXML SDK Git repository. Now that we've gotten the Git repo, we need to start a Visual Studio command prompt and use MS Build to build the new libraries. Developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2013 will work just fine. Change into the directory where you downloaded the repo. If you use the same directory structure that I'm showing here, in other words, the directory name is open-xml-sdk, and that is underneath the documents folder, then it becomes very easy to create a version of power tools for OpenXML that will work with this this new library. In any case, we can now build. When we look in the directory that contains the Git repo, we can see two sets of solutions and projects here. First, there is this open XML SDK dash orig dash SIP dot SLN, and the SIP stands for system.io.packaging. This is the original system.io.packaging that is in the .NET framework. You can continue to build with that version of system.io.packaging if you so require. However, there is this other solution and project, the default solution and project, this open XML SDK.sln. This contains a reference to another project that's in the system.io.packaging directory. All of the source code for the new system.io.packaging is in that directory. When we build the OpenXML SDK.SLN solution, it will also build the system.io.packaging DLL. And there it finished building. You will see some warnings around the fact that some of the types in system.io.packaging are not CLS compliant. This is the same as it's always been, and in any case, it's not a severe problem. We'll probably be addressing these warnings at some point in the future. If we wanted to build the version that uses the original system.io.packaging, then we can just type in MS build open XML SDK dash orig dash SIP.SLN. We're not going to do that right now because we want to use the new system.io.packaging. Now let's make a little console application that makes use of the new OpenXML SDK and system.io.packaging just to make sure that everything built properly and everything hangs together correctly. We want to create a Windows desktop console application. We're going to target the .NET Framework 4.5, call it something imaginative like console application one and put it into some directory. Now we need to add references to those DLLs that we just built. So right click on references, tell it you want to add references, browse, and the place that you want to browse is the location of your repo, the build directory, the open XML SDK lib directory, the debug directory, and we want to get both of these 
DLLs. This is about the simplest open XML program that we can write. All this program does is it counts the number of elements in the main document part. Before I run this example, I need to create this test.docx so that we can actually open it, of course. Now let's run this little example and it worked. Now I'm going to download and compile power tools for OpenXML using this new version of the OpenXML SDK. To download power tools for OpenXML, go to powertools.codeplex.com, go to the downloads tab, and you'll find the new version of power tools for OpenXML down here at the bottom. It's version 3.1.11. Let's grab that fellow. Save the zip file into some directory. We want to unzip it into a directory named OXPT. So easiest way to do that is rename the zip file to OXPT.zip and extract it. When we go into the OpenXML Power Tools directory, the one that we want is the OpenXML Power Tools SIP.sln. After downloading the Power Tools and after unzipping it, we want to unblock all the files. So we can do that by doing dir dash recurse and pipe that into unblock file. Now we can open up the OpenXML Power Tools examples solution. We'll open up the OpenXML Power Tools examples SIP solution. We'll pick one of these examples. We'll look at HTML converter SIP01. One thing that we'll see in here is we've got a reference to the document format dot OpenXML DLL. This is the one that we just built. We also have a reference to system.io.packaging DLL, and that also is the one that we just built. And then there is the reference to the Open XML Power Tools project. And that one is also built using this new system.io.packaging. And it's also built using the Open XML SDK 2.6. We'll set this as the startup project and we'll run this example. It will do the build and there the example runs just fine. If you change directories around, then you may have to remove and re-add the references. Let me show you how you would do that. You would pick document format.openxml and system .io.packaging, remove those, add reference, browse, again, go to the directory where you have the repo slash build slash open XML SDK lib slash debug. And there you'll find the DLLs that you're interested in. So there you have it. That's how you can use Git to get the open XML SDK. You can build it using MS build. You can create a little example. You can use your open XML SDK programs with this new library. And you can also compile and use power tools for OpenXML with this new library, version 2.6 of the OpenXML SDK. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.